Hello my lovelies and welcome, welcome, welcome to today's video. My name's Alia and I'm so glad you stopped by. Today we're talking about your eye correction. And I'm going to explain to you all the things you should know before you go into your optician's appointment or orthoptic appointment and all the things you need to tell your clinician. I've also got beautiful Venus Wonders earrings on today. So I hope you definitely check them out on Instagram. There'll be a link uh, down below in the description. So I hope you find this video informative. I think this is something that applies to everyone who has ever had an eye test. So I hope you can stick around to find out more. So of course I have started off with my beautiful moisturizer underneath, got my SPF happening in all the places where it's the most important. Um, and I'm just going to get straight into the eye look I think today. So most important thing to, I guess, educate yourself um, about or have some idea about before you're going into getting your eyes tested is what to tell your clinician. It's not just about the actual measurement um, anymore. Technology has moved way further away than just developing a script, prescribing your glasses and see you next year. It's not like that anymore. That's not the beginning and end of an eye test anymore. We need to know all about the eye health. We need to be able to educate in prevention if it's necessary. We need to know your genetic background. So do talk to your parents and grandparents if you've got them um, to find out what, you know, Uncle Barry might have suffered with. These are all things that have become extremely, extremely valuable, especially in the last decade. But you will still get a glasses prescription at the end of the day. So the other really important piece of information I would come with is I do a lot of work at about a meter distance. That's where I film my videos, that's where I am looking at in the clinic, that's where my computer screen is, both at home and in clinic. Um, I do a lot of things about a metre away. I also do a lot of things at about two and a half metres away, that's my TV, that's my kitchen environment. Um, a lot of clinical work, again, is it slightly different, sort of double, so around, around about two metres. Um, and I also read really small stuff on my phone, I spend a lot of time on my phone, editing and researching and doing my emails, things like that. So when I go to my optometrist, I need to tell them where my challenges with my vision is. Ah, <laughs> whatever the case may be, whether you have one or more. Um, and they can then prescribe the correct glasses to perhaps tackle more than one challenge if that's the case. Very important information. Because they're not going to prescribe you five different pairs of glasses when you have five different tasks you'd like help with. They'd probably be best to give you the one pair that can tackle them all. And that's very, 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 very possible in, in a comfortable, uncompromising way. But they need to be able to know what it is that you're after. So this is where it gets really interesting. The terms I want you guys to know. Um, I want you to know one very important, or a set of really important words that they probably aren't going to use the correct terminology with you. Um, we tend to oversimplify things I find in clinic. It kind of annoys me, to be honest. I like to be, tr I don't know, I like to treat my patients with the assumption that they know stuff because I would hate to be patronizing to someone who does. So I'm a little bit different, but I do find that people often don't know what I know, even in non-eye related health. And it's just a little bit oversimplified to my taste. I can always ask, can you explain? Um, but you can never sort of, anyway, that's my little peeve. But um, going back to it, the terms that you really need to know is hyperopic, myopic, presbyopic, emetropic big words, which is why they're often not used. Um, but what that basically means is, so metropic is a measurement, so it comes from metric, um, and myopic is someone who is short-sighted. That's often what you'll hear um, in the clinic, that you are short-sighted. There is hyperopic, which can also be described as hypermetropic, depending who your lecturer was. Both terms are very much interchangeable, which means long sided there is astigmatism which means the curvature of your eye is somewhat irregular and has to be corrected with a special kind of lens called a cylinder nothing too fancy um, most people have it, some level of astigmatism some have a lot some have only a little bit um, and the complexities will vary depending on how much and you need to know about presbyopia now this is the, where it gets interesting presbyopia is where the lens starts to harden and the muscles start to weaken. So this is something that people tend to experience around their mid-40s-ish. It could be earlier, it could be a little bit later. There's no real hard and fast rule when it sets in, but it's around about that sort of time. And if you are emetropic, which means you previously didn't need glasses, your vision is emetropic, so zero or close to zero, um, 
you will find that you just need a bit of help, a bit of magnification for close up. If you were myopic, presbyopia won't bother you too much. It's just that you'll find that when you're looking through your glasses, it gets a little bit difficult to see close up. So you'll find that it's easier to lift up your glasses to see close up. If you are hypermetropic or hyperopic, so long-sighted, your long-sightedness in the distance will start to get worse and your reading will start to get really bad. Um, and that's just normal long-sightedness and that's the progress that it will take eventually. If you've also got astigmatism, in Australia astigmatism is corrected in negative lenses or in myopic or short-sighted correction, so it will add to your overall short-sightedness. So if you have a bit of astigmatism, what will happen is that may counterbalance a bit of your long-sightedness. If that's the case, it might increase or add to your short-sightedness, if that's the case, and it may delay your presbyopia somewhat. Similar with myopes, their presbyopia tends to be a little bit delayed. There's a little bit sort of extra buffer in the tank because they don't really use much effort to see up close. They're naturally short-sighted, so they don't, you, you know, they don't sort of wear out that system as quickly as people who are long-sighted or emotropic. Now, the next thing I want to talk to you about is the different types of glasses you may be offered. You might be offered just your regular single vision glasses, which is just reading glasses or just distance glasses, depending on where those needs are. You may need just computer glasses or just things for small detail. Let's say you like crossword puzzles or you work in a tool shed or you like to sew or do some kind of craft. These people, although their vision is relatively quite good, actually usually better than most, because their tasks are so challenging, um, that close-up stuff can just cause a bit of eye strain and can present those underlying problems a little sooner. It's not ruining your eyes. It's just that what you expect your eyes to do is a little harder. So the help you might re require will come on a little bit sooner. There's nothing wrong with that. I still highly encourage people who come and ask me, should I be doing crossword puzzles? Am I ruining my eyes? No, you're not. Eyes never, ever stop working. Um, I just did a video on eye exercises. Eyes never stop working. So... You could strain them though, so you, I do encourage you know regular rest breaks, and I definitely encourage you to wear the most current prescription for your needs. That's a hundred percent the case. But overall, things like crossword puzzles, craft, repairing things, creating things, artwork, um, any kind of concentrated task is so fabulous for the eye-brain connection and even the hand-eye connection a lot of the time. But also, it's training the brain to stay active. The general thing that I've observed in clinic is the people who had really active youths and more importantly middle age get to enjoy a really lovely, healthy, older age. Lenses. We talked about single vision to help with close-up or specific tasks or distance, let's say just driving glasses. That's the monofocal or the single vision. You've also got bifocal, which is where you get this little window at the bottom they're good for, they're basically a distance pair of glasses with a window that has a big old magnification in it. Very old fashioned. It's still very practical for some people, but it's not that commonplace anymore. Most people go for either a multifocal or some version of a multifocal. Multifocals are a hand blended lens where a distance prescription has the another prescription ground into it, whether it be by machine or by hand. Um, and that will then accommodate for the second activity. So let's say driving and seeing the dashboard, very common, or driving and progressively to a reading ad. So you'll have a progression between a distance zone towards some sort of a medium area and then eventually a highly magnified reading zone. There's also myopia control multifocals. Same design principle, but the idea there is a myopic correction that then eases off for um, that close-up vision. So even early age before you come to have that problem, it avoids that problem or is thought to avoid that problem ever starting. Access lenses uh, is another, or a desk lens, is another version of that for the opposite problem. If you're someone who's emotropic or a little bit long-sighted or has a slight astigmatism, you can have that corrected plus have the convenience of a little bit of an ad to relax your muscles. So somebody who has a little bit of a muscle weakness, that could be perfect. Um, so things like um, fatigue of the eyes or, you know, some sort of euphoria. So that means that the muscles start to misbehave um, in the presence of fatigue or overuse. Perfect design for someone like that. Now, next thing is filters. You have a UV filter, you have blue light filter, you have anti-scratch coatings, you have anti-glare coatings, you have 
fly me to the moon coatings I feel like is going to be the next thing there are so many options these days I would highly 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 couldn't recommend it more getting a blue light filter if you're someone who uses any kind of device or technology or if you're someone who works in artificial lighting that's another reason to get a blue light filter fantastic innovation um love it don't have it should get it um but yeah it's, it's just a fantastic protection for our eyes and also for our brain okay, i got some liner on just for the interest of time thought i'd do that off camera um got some beautiful navy blue on today why would you choose anti-glare let's say and not blue light well you might not be using a lot of computers and not might be not using a lot of um devices but you might be doing a lot of driving for example so the anti-glare will still be fantastic for oncoming headlights um you know street lights all that sort of deal um, and it might be nice to just stop any kind of reflection on your glasses from the dashboard like let's say you're a taxi driver so Use a little bit of GPS, but other than that, you're more or less looking at the road. Um, you know, that might be something, a way to save money. That might be a little bit less expensive, might be a little bit more practical for you. Totally fine. Happy with that. Um, why would you choose no filter at all? Well, let's say you work in a really dusty environment. Let's say you're a carpenter or a uh, painter or someone who's constantly going to have their glasses be really dirty with abrasive things, things like dust or plaster or you know things like that obviously you don't want to damage the coatings the coatings are definitely much more fragile than the glasses themselves and when you do care for your glasses when you do clean them run them under warm water do not use soap just warm water just to soften the debris and that way you're wiping away um, wet sort of soft dust rather than hard scratchy dust um, and that's all there is to it or for children like my son who uses a lot of devices does not have a filter on his glasses because well, I would rather give his brother who doesn't wear a prescription blue light filter and glasses for using a device than my son who has sighted or prescription glasses a filter because if he scratches that filter or that coating, um, we're up for, you know, several hundreds of dollars of new lenses. Um, and it's just not practical. And he probably will scratch it because he also plays a lot of sport. He also spends a lot of time out outdoors kicking a ball or footy. Um, you know, he's also riding his bike. He's also doing a better bajillion things. I'd sooner offer him transition glasses, which is the next category, the photochromatic glasses um, which turn into sunglasses outside now as far as i know those are available with any kind of filter on them the only difference there is that they do get a bit of a suntan when they're exposed to uv or intense heat so when you're out in the sunlight basically um, and they do obviously quickly cool down or go clear when that uv has been diminished uh, or you go indoors very convenient it just means that you have the one pair of glasses you're not doing the swappy changey thing all the time it's rather marvellous. The other thing with sunglasses is the option of just getting a darkened tinted lens. Um, if that's something that you require, it's something that I would choose, for example, as someone who doesn't need glasses for anything else. But then I would go polarised. The difference between just a tinted lens is that lens has just been put into a bath of colouring and it's gone dark. All glasses, at least in Australia, all glasses are UV filtered. The fact that there's a piece of plastic in front of your eye is already a UV filter. That's sufficient. How much UV you filter out can also depend on how much glare you're filtering out uh, because of the way the light disperses and can just sort of jump in in the ways of reflection. So polarised glasses are designed in such a way that all horizontal light is cut out and you're only getting vertical light, which means that if you're wearing polarised glasses and you tilt your head, things go a bit grey or sort of black out and then a bit lighter in the most vertical of zones. So it's just a tricky little filter, but it's fantastic for getting the truest and clearest um, vision in dark glasses, considering you're diminishing the amount of light. So golfers, tennis players, any kind of outdoor sportsmen love them. Uh, definitely sail, people who sail. Um, I love them because I just feel like you get so much more clarity um, in a very dark lens, because I prefer my lenses to be as dark as legally possible, but yet I get this filter which is kind of relatively giving me a little bit more information to my eyes. So it's kind of this little offset, which I absolutely really enjoy. So that kind of brings me on to the plastic that sits in front of your eyes. So most lenses, not all, but the vast majority of lenses these days are plastic. They're made of a resin, so a very specific type of plastic, a very controlled thickness plastic. The most common or the most uh, entry level of which is a CR39, the um, thickness factor it's the 
the speed of which the light travels through the plastic and you know refracts the light and all that sort of stuff the thinner you go or the higher the number you go the higher the quality um, of image you're going to get or the less dispersion of image you're going to get because it's a thinner plastic the light has less to get through until it gets to your eye but if you have the most entry-level prescription the most basic prescription and you go for the highest quality plastic it'll end up so thin it'll just snap so it, there's a little bit of reason that has to go into it too the best out there isn't necessarily the best for you i would definitely be guided by my optician as to what um, is the best for my prescription and I would definitely just sort of ask them for a sample if there was a few options that were suitable to me. I would just literally get them to show me what does option B compared to option C give me and why wouldn't I go for option, you know, entry level, option A. Um, and they will often have in the store or in the clinic, they will have samples um, and they'll be able to sh sort of roughly show you what to expect um, the end result to look like it from an aesthetic point of view but also they'll be able to guide you what they would recommend from a, an optical point of view which is super duper important in fact far more important but often it's not a noticeable amount so it's more of a you better trust the optician to understand the optics better than your eyes necessarily can detect them because at the end of the day your eyes are much more challenged than what you are trying on the brand new glasses in the store where everything's nice and hunky-dory and the muscles are compensating and blah 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 when you're tired, when you've done a lot of work, when the glasses are a little bit dirty, um, when your eyes are a little bit dry, you want the best product in front of them. So your op optometrist or optician or optical dispenser, whoever you're seeing, will be able to recommend what that product is rather than just the entry level one that might be suitable for the here and now. I think everyone should try multifocals because at least in Australia they come with a warranty so there's nothing to lose. But if you are up for a financial kind of restraint as a result of your classes purchase this is something that's forever changing this is something that you'll have to upgrade every few years so just have a really long good chat to your optometrist go to someone who you trust someone that you have built a rapport with even if it's in a short time um, because that relationship it's like any health provider your optometrist is the equivalent of like your dentist basically it's it's not just a one-stop thing it's not a manicurist even though to me personally even that's important but you have to be able to trust this person's medical recommendation, your, their health um, advice to you. I haven't really gone into prisms or into contact lenses on this video. It was we would just go for too long if I went down that rabbit hole. Um, but there's definitely room to discuss. It's probably a whole hour I could talk to you about prisms for. So that's probably something I'll do in the future. And of course, the whole other conversation if you're someone who's eligible for contact lenses and the bajillion different types of those that exist. Okay, my lovelies, I hope you enjoyed today's video didn't get to do too much uh, actual makeup on camera today lots to tell you um i hope you noticed my new earrings i spoke about the brand um that makes these gorgeous things last video as well and they'll definitely be tagged down below so please do check them out and they'll definitely be linked in my instagram post about this video so if you're interested in this really gorgeous unique jewelry um, that i had on last time and this time definitely check them out i'm really really impressed if you enjoyed this video please hit like um it's really really important that i see what topics are you know popular and what you you like and what you'd like to hear more about drop me a comment if there's anything you'd like to find out more about i love communicating with you guys i mentioned before a lot of you just prefer to uh, dm me on instagram and that's totally fine too happy to receive your messages really enjoy some of those conversations i've had um over the dms on instagram end up being a clinician um on instagram which is totally fine i, I love what i do and i'm happy to do it anywhere <laughs> If you haven't yet checked out the Instagram, do go over there. Lots going on there. I'm trying to be as proactive there as well. There's just only so much of me to go around, but I'm trying my best. If you haven't subscribed, what are you waiting for? There's definitely a weekly video all about eyes um, and makeup on this channel and the occasional wrapping video or a uh, little bit of a outside of eyes <laughs> topic video also during the midweek wrap ups. As always, I'm really grateful for you coming along on the journey with me wherever you are around the world. I hope you're staying safe. I hope you're not in lockdown like we are in Melbourne. Um, I hope you're all healthy and happy and free um, and that you're going to stay that way. And I can't wait to see you on the next one. Bye.